Hey friends, it's Brian here and um, yeah, it's time for another how to fix my effing Maytag Whirlpool washer. This time it's an F9 E1 code. E1 F9, F9 E1. Effing code, that's what it is. So this code comes up when the washer can't drain fast enough. So been intermittent for me so today I'm gonna tackle the pump but I want to show you a couple other things to look at if your washer looks kind of like this you probably have the same issue whether it says Maytag Whirlpool or something else on there it's still the same thing so first you want to make sure this area is clean down here and you want to make sure you can pull this back and you want to make sure this is clean too don't pull too much of this off because it's a pain in the butt to do, especially with one hand. Um, okay, so those are your two low-hanging fruit. Anybody should be able to do that. Next, I want to show you where the water level sensor is. It's right here. It's way easier to get to than you think it is, but let me get this beast drug out of here because it's mounted to a pedestal and it's got a bunch of cement in there, so it weighs a little bit. Um, let me drag it out from the wall real fast. Now, I've already done my sensor, but if all you were doing was a sensor, it only needs to come out about this much, assuming you don't drop a screw down there, in which case you'll have to drag it out further. But it's this screw, this screw, and this screw. They are one quarter inch. I'm going to cheat and use this. These screws drop off when I don't want them to, and they don't when I want them to. So yeah, that's how it just works. You could do this without a power tool if you had a quarter inch socket or a quarter inch driver. They all do pretty much the same thing. It's very difficult to hold the camera at the same time. Um, you know what? Drill will hold the camera. All right. So I'm gonna pull these screws out. Now, if you haven't worked on one of these before, you may have already caught, I should turn the power off. So let me unplug it. It takes a few seconds for it to unwind. And Whirlpool's sheet metal is made by Gillette, the people who make razors. Every edge of this sheet metal is sharp. So if I cut myself and I cuss, you understand why. I have no idea. This pops off and boom, we're inside the devil. All right, so let's come over here and your victim is right here. Now, again, all of this was fabricated by Gillette. It is sharper than hell, uh, but you need to get this off and there's a little tab here. So if you push up on the tab with your fingernail, you can get the clip out. All right, that's the easy part. And then you just rotate this 90 degrees and it'll unlock. And then use a small pair of pliers. You can undo this little rubber hose without destroying it. And we're going to stick this back in here because that's really all I want to do. I just want to show you how easy it is to change that. That's one of the common causes of E1 F9 is this sensor goes bad and the washer has no idea how much water is in it or not. Okay. So I'm going to put the lid back on and that'll be that section. And I hope that helps people who just maybe that was all that was wrong with your washer. Um, the control board lives in here. They're back ordered, so that tells me that a uh, uh, sorry, you guys probably can't see it. Control board lives in here. Um, they were back ordered when I looked online. That tells me that these are failing because nobody can get them. The water valves are over here. Um, I've already replaced these. That's a Chamazon, as in Chinese Amazon import uh, component. And of course, I broke that because whatever dumbass designed this makes it where you can't get these hoses off and so when i took one off i broke the fucking back off and that was a hundred dollars yes yes i really appreciate that um sorry if you don't like my cussing you can hire the maytag guy and he'll rip you off and then you'll probably cuss too um honestly these have been pretty good machines um i've owned them these are the first ones i ever bought new i've owned them 
eight years. Um, and, you know, I'm just not ready to buy new ones. Because, well, I'm cheap. And these were expensive. They were like, you know, $1,200 a piece or something back then. Don't overdrive these things. All right, so when you put them in, you just want to put them in where they're snug and one pop. That's all they need. They do not, you know, you know you're not putting a rocket to its launch pad on here. <sighs> And kids, getting old sucks. Once you start having to wear reading glasses, you will hate all this stuff you have to do that you really didn't appreciate how well you could see when you were young. All right, so how do you get this out here? Well, cuss words are one of the things you can use, but we're just gonna walk it back a little bit at a time. I'm not gonna unhook the water because it's not going that far. I got a small laundry room. Come on, piece of shit against my oversized deep freeze and that's enough room for me to get back here and cuss yeah so what are we up to now so we need to undo these screws here there 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 they not that one that one that one not that one that one that one and don't take that one out because it's your helper all right so, I'm sorry. Oh, I, you know what? I need that. I need to throw back and use it as a camera holder. Okay, folks, I'm really deeply sorry that this is not going to be the greatest visuals here. Take that one partly out, all the way out, the one right there, all the way out. All right, do the same thing on the other side. The top two come all the way out from the front. And then you come down, the one next one down, skip, the next one down in the middle, do, the one below it, do, go all the way to the bottom and skip the one that's one up, okay? Those hold your sheet metal in place, so you do this in reverse over here. All right, so if you've done that properly, and again, remember, all this is made by Gillette. It's all razor blade sharp. Um, oh, there's one more in the middle. So, okay. Now, you might have some little clippy things here. I don't know where mine went. I don't care. They are not needed. And if you didn't unplug it, there's lots of, sh there's lots of sparky parts in here. So, where we're headed is down below. If you watched my other video on how to clean this poorly designed piece of uh, appliance, you already know that I think the idiot that engineered this should have to clean it all day long for a few years. Um, they could have very easily spent another 50 cents on rubber hoses and moved the pump where it was serviceable. But somebody wanted to save money and they didn't give a damn if you could fix it or not. Fuck them. All right, now you can see what a nice area this is to work in. And that's why it really helps to have something like these lights, all right? Because you can light this up so you can see what the hell you're doing in here. Uh, let me find a spot to clamp this. All right, so your first task All right, you gotta undo this. Now I was in here just the other day. Um, this is the next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you don't have any prizes, but you need a bowl under here because there's about a bowl and a half of water in here. And if you take this off too quickly, it'll spill and make a mess. So you wanna just take your time and drain this out. Oh, it's pretty empty today. Oh, I hear it glug glug. That's not a good sign, but I really don't think there's much in here. So this contraption catches coins. 
zip ties, socks, anything unlucky enough to get sucked down the drain of the washer, and it is one of the culprits that can cause the pump not to perform. It's not why we're in here today. I already cleaned this the other day. I've had that. I've had to take this apart twice. Uh, once when I first got it, I uh, had the service yo-yo out here. An idiot took the front of the machine apart because he was not smart enough to take the back of the machine apart. Whatever. It's amazing how much water stays up in there. All right, so while that's draining, you need a 5 16 drill bit or driver bit for your next trick. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this water. Well. All right. So, the first thing you got to do is disconnect the power. And I apologize, kids. I am laying upside down to do some of this at the same time. There we go. So that's that's the pump power. You just un unplug this. It literally just pulls back towards you with two fingers. All right. So we have a screw here, a screw on there, and a screw in the front. And that's what we got to undo in order to drop the pump out. Stephen Covey says, start with the end of mine. Um, I'll be right back. So my preferred tool doesn't fit in here, and I'm left sitting here thinking of a line from Star Wars, let the hate flow through you. And yes, there is quite a bit of hate here for this engineering. You know, this shit gets put together on an assembly line before it is a box and so they just don't give a shit that it's hard to work on out in the real world because they i frankly think they want it to break so you'll just buy another one and not fix anything fucking corporate vultures you know if i pay twelve hundred dollars for something it ought to last more than five years all right so another one here it looks like we've got four screws on this this pump there were three in the video that i watched but that's why i'm making this video because well you know you can't really believe everything you watch Yes, there are four on this, this pump. Now, I have not messed with the drain discharge hose, and that is a deliberate choice. I found Reddit to be a pretty good source of information for um, what can go wrong with these washers. Um, with the exception of one jackass on there, most people are pretty helpful. Uh, there was one jackass who wanted to get his rocks off by insulting people who asked questions. And, you know, I kind of wonder if that person isn't just a shill paid by Whirlpool to harass homeowners who want to fix their own shit. Yes. Yes. All right. I got to go get a pair of pliers um, because that's what you need for this hose clamp over here. I'll be right back. Now... I want to say, if you don't have a fancy pair of pliers like this, it doesn't matter. You just need a pair of pliers to squeeze these little things so you can get this, this hose off. Where's that bowl? Because I'll bet you this thing's going to put the bowl under here. Yeah, what do you know? 
jelly. All right. So at that point, this should just twist off. Ta-da! All right, so. Um, I, I want to take a moment to encourage you, whether you are a man or a woman, old or young, you can fix this. There isn't anything sophisticated about it. Uh, it there just isn't. So I, I just want to encourage you to take a crack at this. The worst that will happen is you'll call the repair guy. And, you know, we're going to dig in here in a minute and see why it died. But for the moment, look at, let me go get the new one. All right, so there are three screws that hold the pump. I've taken some Vaseline and just lubricated the O-ring. Um, I did take this out and lubricate it so that it won't seize in place. And then I think this just slides up in here. That's all there is to it. bit trying on one's patience but I promise you this isn't difficult it's just frustrating because if they'd made this a little taller and there's just so many ways they could have made this easier to service and they didn't and the thing is, is if you don't do this work yourself then you have to pay the technician to be irritated by it And again, I'm just convinced that their goal is to get you to buy a new one and not do any repairs. Because that bullshit with the commercial is just that. It's just a fucking whirlpool with a Maytag sticker on it. And they're not even very nice to their employees, to be honest. I had a friend that worked for them in sales support and they laid him off faster than a dog turd on a hot beach. So now I'm going to check that these are all tight. And I'm going to plug the motor back in. There we go. That's all we got down here. I'm going to keep this. Uh, I'm going to throw it in the, in the quick drawer down there because, yeah, that thing's kind of expensive and I might need one one day. 
Uh, I don't see anything else going on down here. Double check my hose. We're done in here. Now we're gonna put the, the cover back on and uh, see if we can actually do wash now without it going beep 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 beep. E1, F9, E1, F9. Yeah, F that. All right, let's put it back together. All right, so thread this up in here. And remember, everything's made by Gillette, so careful what you do with your fingers. Start with the center screw. It's got a little slot for you to stick this on. And then it's just as easy as putting the screws back in. Now, I'm gonna do these in two steps. Kick that out of my way. I'm just gonna start these screws, and then I'll, once they're all started, I'll come back and torque them down. That way, if I don't have things quite aligned, I have a little wiggle room until I get everything aligned, because precision isn't really one of the things that I think was involved in the design of the sheet metal. The replacement pump was about $40 on Amazon with uh, next day delivery, which was actually kind of cool. It was one of the times that Amazon actually delivered something the next day. And I noticed an interesting marking on the pump. It said 10 minutes on, 50 minutes off. That's a stupid way to design a pump on a washer. And that might be why my old one is dead. Well, it's not bad. It, it drains, it just doesn't drain fast enough. All right, that's it. Time to push it all back in. All right, I'm gonna run a cleaning cycle. Uh, last time I ran a uh, cleaning cycle earlier today, it wouldn't finish, so we'll just see if it works. tell you one thing that pump is a whole lot quieter than the old one like the old one was sound like garbage disposal so let's go take the old one apart and see why it wasn't running right all right so I'm just curious why this died so I'm gonna take the screws out and see screwdriver down here and another one here Ooh, okay so that's not actually for the pump it's just there we go so had some little chip there kind of screwdriver. I want to uh, pry this off and see if there's anything underneath it. It's broken now. like anything but it's a you know so no telling um 10 minutes on 50 minutes off so yeah i think the motor just went bad i don't have any real other answers thanks for watching hope you found this as interesting and helpful as uh, uh 
I intended it to be, and that's all there is.